Hello everyone, my name is Jalak Mishra and today we are going to discuss a very important thing. I am going to discuss the best ways to study English literature. And this video is going to be helpful for anyone who is studying English literature, irrespective of their degree they are pursuing. If you are in BA, MA or even pursuing your PhD, it doesn't matter. So just get into the video right away. So. You are here to understand how to study English literature the best way. But hold on, let's wait and try to understand the question first. How to study English literature is the second step. First of all, we need to understand what to do before we start studying English literature. And that becomes very important. To study English literature, you need to be prepared. In this video, I'll be discussing 10 important things that you must do in order to study English literature the best way, score better marks in the examinations, and also prepare yourself to excel in the academics. So, let's start with the very first step, the step zero. What to do before studying English literature? Before you actually start studying, you should study the ways to study English literature. That is, you have to read a few books that introduce you to the world of English literature. I will mention four books that will tell you what are the best methods to study English literature. The first book is How to Begin Studying English Literature by Nicholas Marsh. This book tells you how to begin studying, how to comprehend your syllabus, how to understand the basic concepts. The second book is Studying English Literature, The Essential Companion by Paul Goring and other authors. This book is very important because it has many divisions and once you start reading this book, you will not only understand the basic, the introductory, the elementary ideas associated with English literature, you will also get to know other things that become very handy once you excel in the academics in the field of English literature. There are meanings of literary terms, there are basic introductions to literary theory, there are introductions to concepts, genres, and ages in the history of English literature. In short, there are many things that this book contains that helps anyone who is just starting to study English literature in a BA program. The third book is Studying Literature in English, an introduction by Dominic Rainsford. This book becomes important because it starts right away with the genres in literature. Once you get through the jhana, you will also get to know concise introduction to many different movements and periods in the history of English literature. And there are many other things. And fourth and the final book is Studying English Literature, a Practical Guide by Tori Young. This book offers many things and it offers these things in a very different way. The author suggests the students of literature how they can improve their comprehension of literature. He begins with reading, writing, thinking about theories, writing research papers and essays, and also how to append references in whatever you write. So this book takes a little different course, but it also comes handy because it tells you many things right at the beginning. So, once you study any of these books or all of these books for the best of yourself, you'll have a very good idea to start your journey in English literature. These books will equip you with all the armors that you need to excel in the field of English literature. Now, we come to step two which is studying the syllabus. 
Now, this is important for anyone, whether you are pursuing your BA or MA, you need to study your syllabus very carefully. Once you study your syllabus, you can easily plan a way out for your semester or for your year or for a half yearly examination. So whatever happens, you need to study your syllabus very carefully, very attentively, and that will help you planning your studies for the future. The third step is developing a habit of reading original texts. I have come across many students in English literature who actually don't read text at all. They study guest papers, they study notebooks, they study guidebooks, they study the internet, but they don't go through the original texts. This is not a good thing. As a student of literature, you must go through the original texts. Reading original texts will also help you developing patience in your personality because navigating through texts might be a clumsy task at times. Nevertheless, as a student, you need to go through each and every book prescribed in your syllabus. That will help you to be in a position where you can understand different concepts, twists and turns in a novel, comprehend a poetry collection, understand the nature of an author's production, understand an age in the history of English literature, and do many other things when it comes to understanding, writing, and presenting your case in front of students, in front of your professors. So, it is very important to develop a habit to read original texts. The next step is understanding how important is taking notes as you study textbooks or you study in your classroom. Taking notes is a very good thing that will help you remember what were the important things you were taught in your classroom or what was that important character who came on the scene and changed everything in a novel or what was that line in a poem by Wordsworth that completely changed the poem upside down. So taking notes at any stage of your academic year always becomes very, very important. So you should develop a habit of taking notes as you study by yourself or you study in your classroom or you study in a group or even you browse internet casually. The next step after taking notes is writing a lot. This is something that I suggest any and every student I come across. Once you start writing, you will understand what you have actually understood when you read a novel or what you understood when you read a poem or what you understood when you navigated through a book of history of English literature. So whatever you read, try to summarize it in your writing. That will also help you write better answers in your examinations. Next thing that you can do is use the internet responsibly. Yeah, you heard it right. When it comes to internet, contemporary students have become very free. They enjoy the freedom of using their mobile data using their laptops, using their computers, using their tablets. However, not everything that you read on the internet comes with authenticity. Anyone can produce anything and publish on any website. So, when you are using internet, always make sure that you are reading on a website that is authentic, that has a content matching your requirement and website having a history of publishing content in the same field. For example, you cannot read something about Wordsworth on a website being run by a chef. Even if the chef has a keen interest in Wordsworthian poetry and he or she has produced a single article about Wordsworth, you may take this just to understand something or just to take a simple point or just to understand what his or her viewpoint about the poems by Wordsworth is. However, you cannot take that as an authentic source 
to cite in your paper or to append in your answers in the examination. So, be careful while studying through the internet. Another thing that you can do as a student of English literature is create groups of like-minded students in the start discussing, debating, challenging the viewpoints of others, arguing in an amicable way with others. Having a group that helps you understand a concept of English literature in a better way is always important. This group can also help you open up, help you break your hesitation and presenting your viewpoint forcefully. Coming to the next thing that you can do is looking beyond your syllabus. Yes, you need to study your syllabus very carefully, but also when you ask students who appeared in an examination recently, many of them often discuss that some questions were out of syllabus. Why? This is because if you focus only on the novels prescribed in your syllabus, you may miss the novelist. So it becomes important to look beyond your syllabus as much as you can, as little as you can. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have to study one novel by Jane Austen. Let's say it's Pride and Prejudice. What about Jane Austen as a novelist? One novel cannot give you an entire picture of a novelist's overall production. So, to understand the novelist better, to understand the style of Jane Austen, to understand the literary views, the ideas, the imagination, the style, the themes, and the horizon of literature produced by Jane Austen, you may need to study a few other novels written by her. You may also need to study something about Jane Austen, other critics, other novelists have said. You may need to study Jane Austen entirely differently. So, looking beyond your syllabus many times comes very handy and it also helps you understand your syllabus in context and ultimately it equips you with many other ideas that you may not have if you studied one year syllabus when it comes to writing answers in your examination. And let me assure you that if you go beyond your syllabus and use all those learnings that you have gathered venturing outside your syllabus, in your examination, in your papers, in your articles, your professors are going to be impressed. So, always try to look beyond your syllabus whenever you can. Remember not to cost your actual syllabus in this venture. The next thing that you can do as an English literature student is listening to the poems being sung or read by other poets, by those who have a mastery in reading or singing poetry. This will help you memorize the poems in your syllabus. Search for T.S. Eliot reading his poems on YouTube. You will understand what point I am trying to make. You can also hear many other poets reading their poetry themselves. Ted Hughes, Sylvia Plath, and a few other poets who actually have read beautifully will impress you and also compel you, inspire you to start reading poetry in a lyrical way. The final thing that I would suggest to any student of English literature is watching movies based on the novels prescribed in their syllabus plage prescribed in their syllabus or just for fun at times. Watching movies that are based on literary works help you understand those particular works in a convenient way. For example, if you watch movies based on novels by Jane Austen, you understand Austen's novels very easily. If you watch movies based on Thomas Hardy's novels, you can understand his novels in different perspectives because visual content always helps you remember key points rather conveniently compared to a text content. So, if you have some spare time, 
If you have some leisure, you can start watching movies in that time to fill the void and also make your syllabus comfortable and fun. Now remember, these are the things that I have suggested. As a student, you have to develop your own ideas, your own methods, your own progress path to scale the new heights, to achieve new success and to reach new milestones. English literature is a myriad world that comes with many opportunities, but you need to be prepared to grab the best ones that come your way. All the best and I'm sure you will do your best in the upcoming examinations, semester, term, internal, annual, whatever that is. So make yourself proud. Take care. Have a good time.